Hey guys, Atsu here. Today I wanted to talk about the new banners which have just been drip marketed by Hoyoverse Genshin Impact official Twitter. We have got the Seno and Kandake banner as you can see there with Shinobu as well as Sayu alongside the Venti variation as well. We have Nahida drip marketed, we have Layla drip marketed, but most importantly guys, most importantly, we have arguably the best banner that has ever dropped on Genshin Impact. Impact, the weapons banner epitome in vacation. Let us begin. So first of all, we've got Nahida. And the reason why Nahida is going to be very important is as I've talked about very briefly, as you guys know, I am on the media server of Genshin Impact where I get to play with Sano and Kandake or any characters that come before a patch a few days earlier to record footage for you guys. And I can briefly tell you guys that we need a Dendro character that has a lot of application of Dendro and hope off field. Is Nahida going to be that character? I don't know yet, but what I can say for sure is every single Archon character that has dropped in Genshin Impact, they are all support characters that are very, very good. Venti, crowd control god, very, very good. Animo, very strong. Zhongli, the shielding god, makes all of the gameplay in Genshin very, very easy. Raiden, the energy recharge god, if you get some constellations on her, or if you have very good artifacts and weapons on her, does a lot of damage as well all three are very very strong staple characters in most players gameplay i would say 80 percent of players use almost all three of these characters if not at least one or two of these characters i am not surprised or i will not be surprised if nahida turns out to be on that level archons always going to be super strong so i'm hoping that lesser lord kusanari physic of purity nahida is going to be the dendro support that so many people have been looking out for dendro main character right now or dendro traveler is of course very very good most people really understand and appreciate how good that character is especially as an f2p but i assume kusanari nahida is gonna take it one level higher next we have got fantastical evening star half awake half asleep which is what i am right now which is why i'm slurring some of my words because i just woke up all incredulous layla as well going to be a cryo character i have no idea what she does she has a very interesting look i don't know if she's going to be from monster if she's going to be from Sumeru, definitely probably not Liyue, but who knows, they could throw a wrench in there. I don't think Inazuma, it does look like it's going to be Monstat. You've got the blue, the gold, the white, and the black, which is like akin to Monstat drip. Drip, is that the right word? Yes, you have, let's see who has those colors. Kaya has those colors. Albedo has those colors. Obviously, they have different ratios of those colors with the white, black, gold, and blue drip. And we also have Eula has those colors as well. I think Mona also has some of those colors. Doesn't have white, but Mona has those generic colors as well, as does Yelan. But Yelan, as we know, is from Libra. So who knows? Maybe could be from somewhere else. Now, I would assume this is not a five-star character, but I could be wrong because the drip is superb and we'll just have to wait and see another cryo character i don't think we've had one for quite some time but let's move on to the seno and kandake banner now i know a lot of people are going to be like why are you pronouncing seno and kandake that way well for me as someone who has had my name atsu mispronounced almost all my life I would like to do my due diligence and try to do my best to correctly pronounce the names from the respective characters from different cultures. And I think the one easiest way to look at this, guys, is... So my English name is James, and I tell people my English name is James because I know they won't be able to pronounce it, or they've already, they've already pr proved to me that they can't pronounce the name Atsu, and they say Astu or Asto or something completely wrong. So I tell people most of the time my name is James. So... An example would be, guys, and this is going on a brief tangent here, is if a character called James was brought into the game and the one person in charge of the English dub of Genshin Impact decided, oh, that name is not pronounced James, it's James. And everyone suddenly became like, oh, it's factual. It must be 100% truth because Genshin Impact said that it's called James. 
No, 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 that's not how it works. One person who is in charge of deciding how the pronunciation works, if they make a mistake, that doesn't mean it's correct. It's the same with Tartaglia. It's not actually Tartaglia. For those of you who didn't know, it's not Tartaglia. Clee is also not Clee, it's actually Clay. And I know a lot of people don't care too much about these names because they're more Western names. But yes, Tartaglia is an Italian name and it comes from Italian theater. I forgot the name. And then Clay is German. I believe it's for Clover. But yeah, there's many names that are just mispronounced in the English version of Genshin Impact. If you look at the Chinese version and the Japanese version and the Korean versions, all the names most of the time are pronounced differently. Maybe Japanese and Chinese have a little bit more similarities because Seno is how they pronounce it in Chinese and Japanese. And I believe Seno is Greek. I think there's also an Arabic version of this, but the Greek version is for dog. It literally means dog, I believe, in Greek. But yeah, that's a little bit of lore. But that's why I pronounce it that way. Sano and Kandake. I'm trying to be as respectful as possible to the cultures as someone who hates having my name mispronounced all the time. Right, without further ado, this banner is absolutely garbage. And the reason why is Sayu is, you know, Sayu is, <coughs> she's good. If you like to roly poly all the time at constellation six maybe she's a bit more usable but i would not say she's anything superb she's not one of the premium four star characters in the game kandake after playing with her i know a lot of people having looked at dreams and stuff say she's trash but i personally do like her i think her gameplay is very enjoyable but having said that enjoyable is not necessarily the same as good right or objectively meta so sayu is the same thing i think sayu is very fun i think kandake is very fun so we'll just have to wait and see i do think though people are undervaluing her potential we'll just have to wait and see it might be one of those instances i'm hoping so you know the reputation i have with calling things might get a little bit better maybe it's still copium after all the zongli stuff i still stand by my zongli takes from all those years ago but i remember when raiden came out i remember when kazaha came out i said both of these characters are insane they're gonna be insane for a long time and people back then they were like kazaha's not that good just use sucros raiden's terrible and I was, I was just like what are they talking about so after a long period of time i do think kandake is probably going to be appreciated more in the long run we'll just have to wait and see how that pans out at the very least i would say i do enjoy playing her with seno she is someone that I don't know if I can really say this, but she's good for enhancing the normal attacks of certain characters and their damage. So we'll just stay with that. Shinobu at the moment, I know when Shinobu came out, a lot of people were like, ah, oh, she's not that great. She's just there as an electro healer to fill that, fill that slot. She has, with Dendro, become a little bit more useful. Same with Toma. They have become a little bit more feasible. Are they meta though? No, they're not like the premium four stars in the game. I, however, still like Shinobu as well. But having said that, for this banner, I would say anyone that is still looking for constellations, this banner is great. For new players who are looking for meta characters, who are looking for strong, reliable characters, you know, it's, it's okay. It's, it's okay. It's not bad. Seno is very, very fun to play, but... Also, I wouldn't say he's the strongest character in the world. He's kind of like a hyper carry like Shao. We've already seen the gameplay and how it works. There are things with like timing that you have to get down with his combination. Artifacts are not the easiest to farm for him, especially if you're a new player. So with all that in mind, do I recommend this banner for new players, for players that want to be part of the meta, that want to have a very efficient team that's very strong with little investment? No, because none of these characters require very low investment they all actually require relatively good investment and very specific artifact sets so that is something worth keeping in mind venti on the other hand as i talked about with nahida earlier is an archon is one of the gods of the game and when i say that i mean canonically is one of the gods of the game and because of that it seems like hoyo verse rightfully so make all the gods very useful very strong characters and very usable characters so venti is one of those characters that i don't feel like is going to be replaceable for essentially the entirety of the game there's always going to be use for venti very good at crowd controlling smaller enemies of course with the larger enemies maybe not as useful can still apply swirl and all of that but not necessarily the best application or not necessarily the most comfortable application because you need to have good positioning but venti still very very strong still would be someone that i would consider very high a tier or s tier seno in comparison maybe a tier at best maybe b tier kind of like the level at ayato and ito is at where they're like just solid they're very solid at what they do but they're not game breaking or game changing what is game changing 
is this banner right here. Energy for the end, one of the best support weapons in the game. I remember when it first came out, I was guilty of this as well. People are kind of skeptical, didn't really want to pull for it too much because a support weapon, how big of a difference can it make? Ultimately, the difference it makes is still not the end of the world. It's not night and day, but it's very nice. If you are a whale, if you are an end game player, it's a noticeable difference. And if you want to push your limit that little bit much higher, LG for the end is one of the nice weapons to have. It has great energy recharge, has a fantastic support passive that you can see on the screen right now. And it, just overall, it's a very useful weapon for so many different characters because energy recharge is such a good stat, because that passive is such a good stat, because having off-field supports is such a good thing to have for all your other characters that are main DPS or hyper carries or just rotational DPS characters is very, very nice. Then we have the Polar. The Polar. Staff of the Scarlet Sands. This weapon, I think, is pretty much essential for Seno if you want him to do nice numbers. Without this weapon, it's kind of like Zhongli DPS without the Staff of Homer. It's copium. If you are going to be using any other weapon on Seno, you're losing out. It's like not using Staff of Homer on Zhongli or Hu Tao. It's really not the same. Like you lose out on so much. And I think this is the same kind of deal. The weapon description is on the screen. To dumb it really, really down, it gives you a ridiculous amount of crit rate, the same as the Jade Cutter, 44.1%, which is insane. It makes it so much easier to build your crit and crit damage ratios when you have almost 50% coming from the weapon itself and then the passive it encourages you to use elemental mastery so yes this is another shangling usable weapon in fact it could arguably be shangling's best in slot weapon depending on how you want to build her but for any characters that utilize elemental mastery which seno is going to do it will allow you to convert that elemental mastery into attack stat so you can now stack your elemental mastery and still have a significant amount of attack stat so it's giving you crit it's giving you elemental mastery and it's giving you attack essentially all in one which is ridiculous it's the same thing with staff of homer staff of homer gives you hp which you want for hu tao and you also want for zongli or any other polearm characters that want hp and it gives you crit damage and it will also give you attack stat converted from the hp so that's exactly what this is doing so it's a really really top tier top tier weapon i can't recommend this banner enough because both of the five stars are amazing but to top it off we have got the new four star claymore the makera aquamarine description on the screen right now and aside from that weapon it is an elemental mastery claymore and at the moment there's not many i can think of the top of my head elemental mastery claymore wielders other than maybe deluch but that's a bit copium it really depends on your build i mean right now we don't have any crit damage claymores that aren't ito's claymore because that one scales with defense it's not ideal but we don't have any crit claymores that are five stars and we have the four star battle pass one but we don't have any other ones for Deluge, which is ideally what Deluge wants. So some people would opt for maybe Elemental Mastery for Vaporize Deluge or Melt Deluge, where Elemental Mastery is actually better than Attack Percent. So that might be something you can use. I don't know any other characters off the top of my head that would really want an EM claim or maybe Sayu. But other than that, we have got the Favonius Bow and the Favonius Lance, two of the best support four-star weapons in the game. Favonius Lance, in fact, in general, I think is a superb weapon. I think everyone should try to have this weapon at R5 if they can. Favonius Warbow, also very, very, very nice weapon. Maybe more interchangeable with the Sacrificial Bow, but Favonius weapons in general are amazing for energy recharge and energy particles for your entire team. Favonius Lance, especially because Polarm is such a dominant class in the game right now, is one of the best four-star weapons in the game occasionally or many times just even nicer to have than a lot of five-star weapons in the game right now then we have lion's roar which is probably the most copium weapon on here i know some people use it for sing cho but you know it's it's, it's a little bit copium i think most players who would be able to use this for 
their carries, probably have good artifacts already. And for the wider player base, especially people watching my video, if you're more casual, then Lion's Roar is not the greatest weapon in the world. Sacrificial Fragments, also I will not say the greatest weapon in the world unless you're playing with Sucrose. If you like Sucrose and you are a meta player, then this weapon is superb for Sucrose. It's very good for certain characters that want to be able to spam their elemental skill, which maybe we'll start to get more of in the future when it comes to Catalyst. But overall, that's mainly a Sucrose weapon. There aren't many other options for energy recharge, though, when it comes to the Catalyst other than Favonius Codex, which again, it's okay. It's okay. Catalysts are in like a weird position right now of how useful they are. But that, I believe, is everything. The bow and the polearm, elegy for the end, staff of the Scarlet Sands, I would have to say, I genuinely think that this is probably the best banner, including character banners. This is the best banner we have seen because the usability of the, the things on this banner is really, 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 really good. The four stars on here, two of them are absolutely superb. One of them has untapped potential, which I'm sure will become useful in the future. And then we also have the Sacrificial Fragments, which again, I feel like has some possibility of usability for more characters other than Sucrose in the future as well. But yeah, both of these weapons, I think are going to have a lot of longevity. I think Elemental Mastery is something Hoyoverse is looking to tap into a lot more now with reactions and reaction damage and the importance of having elemental reactions. And then Elegy for the end is just a fantastic, phenomenal support weapon. But yes, I'm excited. I've already finished recording my Sano video. I'm getting that edited right now. I'm not sure if I want to do a dedicated to Kandake video. I did talk about Kandake a little bit at the end of my Sano video. And I am probably going to going for constellation six minimum i will go for constellation two because i think it really does make a huge difference on seno but that's all i can say for now kandake i would ideally like to have a constellation six because it changes her gameplay quite a lot and i'm looking forward to nahida and also to layla and what they can bring to the table as well genshin impact is in just such a wonderful place right now very 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 exciting stuff so many new characters coming out so many big patches coming out so much content coming out as well feels good to be playing genshin impact right now and i hope you guys enjoyed the video have a wonderful wonderful day and bye bye